Chapter 14 The Struggle for Social Equality The struggle for political freedom was important in the development of modern India. This struggle was based on the broad philosophy of man's emancipation. Naturally, in the course of this struggle, there ensued an opposition to things such as feudalism, social inequality, economic exploitation, along with an opposition to political dependence. Like freedom, the principle of equality is also very important. The contribution of the movements launched by peasants, workers, women and Dalits and the stream of socialism that gave importance to equality is significant from this point of view. One cannot understand the development of modern India without understanding this contribution. Let us, therefore, study some of these important movements. The Peasant Movement The economic policies of the British adversely affected the Indian peasants. The British government used to protect the landlords and moneylenders. They exploited the peasants. The peasants rose in revolt against this injustice on many occasions. The peasants in Bengal formed their union and revolted against the compulsion of cultivating indigo. The play Neel Darpan, written by Deen Bandhu Mitra, brought to the notice of the society the wretched conditions of the peasants producing indigo. In 1875, the peasants in Maharashtra rose in revolt against the atrocities of the landlords and money lenders. The peasants in Uttar Pradesh formed Kisan Sabha in 1918 under the leadership of Baba Ramchandra. The Mopla peasants rose in a great revolt in Kerala. The British government crushed this uprising. At the initiative of Professor N. G. Ranga, the Akhil Bharatiya Kisan Sabha was formed in 1936. Swami Sahajanand Saraswati was its president. The Sabha presented a declaration of peasants' rights to the Indian National Congress. In the same year, the annual session of the Congress was held at Faizpur in Maharashtra. Thousands of peasants attended this session. In this session, the Congress adopted the program of the Kisan Sabha. In 1938, the crops in eastern Khandesh were destroyed due to heavy rains. The peasants were ruined. In order to get the land revenue waived, Sane Guruji organized meetings and processions in many places and took out marches to the collector's office. The peasants joined the revolutionary movement of 1942 in great numbers. Workers' Unions Industries like textile mills and railway companies had started in India in the latter half of the 19th century. Though the emergence of the working class had not reached a sizable proportion, efforts were made during this period to solve the problems of the workers. Shashipath Banerjee and Narayan Meghaji Lokhande organized the workers at the local level. Lokhande's contribution to the working class movement was so important that he is described as the father of the Indian workers' movement. At about the same time, an agitation was launched against the wretched conditions of the tea plantation workers in Assam. The workers of the Great Indian Peninsular GIP Railway called a strike for their demands. At the time of the anti-partition agitation, Indian workers had struck their work from time to time in support of Swadeshi. However, there was no large-scale workers' organization to solve the problems of workers. After the First World War, because of industrialization, the working class in India grew in size. This necessitated the formation of a nationwide organization of workers. The All India Trade Union Congress, AITUC, was founded out of this necessity in 1920. The labor leader N. M. Joshi played a major role in the working of the AITUC. Lala Lajpat Rai was the president of the first session of the AITUC. He told the workers to actively participate in the national movement. Socialist leaders like Sripad Amrut Dange, Muzaffar Ahmed and others propagated socialist ideas among the workers and built militant unions of the workers. The Mill Workers Union in Mumbai went on a strike for six months in 1928. Many such strikes were called by railway workers, jute mill workers and others. The British government was disturbed to see this growing strength of the trade union movement. Legislations were made to suppress this movement. 
The struggle of the trade union movement complemented the national struggle, the socialist movement. Many of the young people in the Congress began to feel that it was necessary to overthrow the British government in order to protect the interests of the common people. They also began to realize that the society should be restructured on the principle of economic and social equality. This awareness resulted in the emergence and growth of the socialist ideology in India. While they were in jail at Nashik, the socialist youths in the Congress decided to form a socialist party within the Congress. As per this decision, the Congress Socialist Party was founded in 1934. It comprised leaders such as Acharya Narendra Dev, Jay Prakash Narayan, Minu Masani and Dr. Ram Manohar Lohia. The Quit India movement of 1942 was spearheaded by these young socialists. Indians began to get familiar to Karl Marx and his communism. Lokmanya Tilak had written an article about Marx as long ago as 1881. After the First World War, influence of communism became noticeable in India. Manavendranath Roy had participated in the international communist movement. In 1925, the Communist Party was established in India. Young communists formed militant organizations of the workers and of peasants. The British government was alarmed by the communist movement. The government decided to crush the movement. Muzaffar Ahmed, Shripad Amrut Dange, Nilkant Zoglekar and others were arrested. They were charged with the planning of a conspiracy to overthrow the British rule. They were given different terms of sentences. This trial took place at Meerut. Therefore, it is known as the Meerut Conspiracy Case. Even after the Meerut trial, the communist influence on the workers' movement remained constant. Women's Emancipation In the Indian society, women had a secondary status. Due to many evil practices and customs, they were subjected to great injustice. We have studied in the lessons on the Renaissance in India that in the modern age, there was an awakening against this injustice. Some men reformers took the initiative in the women reform movement, but in the course of time, leadership provided by women began to emerge. They founded their own independent organizations. The Arya Mahila Samaj and Sharda Sadan founded by Pandita Ramabai and the Seva Sadan founded by Ramabai Ranade are examples of this. Also, the Bharat Mahila Parishad 1904 and the All India Women's Conference 1927 were founded. Therefore, this institutional work reached the national level. Through these organizations, women began to fight for their issues such as the right to inheritance, the right to vote, etc. In the 20th century, women's participation in public life began to increase. Women's participation in the national movement and the revolutionary work was significant. After the introduction of the Act of 1935, women were included in the provincial ministries. After independence, the principle of the equality of men and women had been emphatically stated in the Constitution of India. The Dalit Movement The social structure in India was based on inequality. Social reformers like Mahatma Jyotirao Phule, Narayan Guru brought about the awakening of the people. Following the teachings of Mahatma Phule, Gopal Baba Walangkar and Shivram Janba Kamle worked for the eradication of untouchability. In his book Vital Vidhonsan, Walangkar presented the deconstruction of untouchability. In Tamil Nadu, Periya Ramaswamy started a movement for the eradication of untouchability. In the state of Kolhapur, Rajarshi Shahu Maharaj did substantial work for the abolition of caste distinction. Maharshi Vithal Ramji Shinde started the institution, the Depressed Classes Mission, for the progress of the Dalits. The Justice Party did valuable work in the South. Mahatma Gandhi took up the issue of the eradication of untouchability, thereby trying to remove the injustice inflicted on the Dalits. Under the leadership of Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar, the Dalit struggle acquired the dimension of a broad movement. Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar aimed at establishing a society based on the principles of liberty, equality and fraternity.
He was convinced that the injustice to the Dalits and inequality would not end unless the caste system was entirely rooted out. Social equality, according to him, is a right of the Dalits. He intended carrying on a movement based on self-respect. It is from this point of view that he founded the Bahishkrut Hitkarani Sabha in July 1924. He inspired his followers with the message, Get education, get united and fight. Baba Sahib Bole got a bill passed in the Mumbai Provincial Assembly whereby the public water reservoirs were to be opened to the untouchables. However, in reality, the water reservoirs remained out of the reach of the Dalits. Therefore, Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar and his followers staged a Satyagraha at the Saudar Lake in Mahar. They burnt the Manusmriti that advocated inequality. He started a Satyagraha in 1930 for the entry of the Dalits into the Kalaram temple at Nashik. Karmavir Dada Sahib Gaikwad led this Satyagraha. Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar started periodicals such as Mook Nayak, Bahishkrut Bharat, Janata and Samata for bringing about social awakening and for giving vent to the woes of the Dalits. We have previously studied the work of Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar in relation to the Pune Pact and the Round Table Conferences. Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar founded the Independent Labour Party with a view to solving the problems of the labourers. In the legislature, he opposed the laws that went against the interests of the workers. He founded the All India Scheduled Castes Federation in 1942 in order to put forth the Dalit issues forcefully. Through the Constitution of India, Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar made a significant contribution to the creation of a social order based on equality in modern India. In 1956, along with his innumerable followers, he embraced Buddhism that upholds humanity and equality. The awakening among the exploited constituents of the Indian society lent a broader base to the national movement. It led to the creation of an atmosphere conducive to the removal of the failings in the Indian social order. The contribution of all these movements to the Indian freedom struggle is valuable.